All right, um, so we just did an example for this problem here of finding the max and min values of this function, f of xy is x times y squared. And we did it over this region here, x squared plus y squared. We did it for x squared plus y squared less than or equal to 4. Okay? And so we saw that one of the ways that you can figure out how to find the max and min values here is, well, first you look for critical points on the interior. We found that this was sort of a strange example because the critical points, um, it wasn't just a single point or a collection of isolated points on the interior. It was actually a whole line's worth of critical points. Nonetheless, you can look at the values along that line. They were all zero. Um, and then you look to see what happens along the boundary. Okay? And uh, so along the boundary, well, you have this sort of constraint. So we can think of it this way. Right? So we have a constraint. Um, and our constraint is that x squared plus y squared has to equal 4. Um, now, we actually, we can solve this one with calc 1 methods. Strangely enough, we can. Um, I'm going to show you another technique that's going to generalize where calc 1 sometimes, you know, sometimes calc 1 is going to let us down. But um, the y squared in this function, I can solve it for it here in the constraint, right? So here's kind of another way that you could have done it. You could have done this uh, on the boundary. we could say that f of xy is f of, well, yeah, maybe we don't try to actually plug in for y because it depends on whether we're on the top or the bottom half of the circle. But I know what y squared is. y squared is just 4 minus x squared. So it looks like x times 4 minus x squared. All right? So... 4x minus x cubed. Um, well, that's just some function g of x. And I know that x here can be between minus 2 and 2, right? x goes from minus 2 to 2 on a circle of radius 2. And I know how to calculate the derivative, g prime. It's 4 minus 3x squared. I want that to be equal to 0. And if that's going to be equal to 0, we solve for x. And we get that x is plus or minus 2 over the square root of 3. And you might remember from the previous video, that's exactly what we expect to get. If x is plus or minus 2 over root 3, well, then I can go back here. I can put that in. I can say that, well, so x squared is 4 thirds. So 4 thirds plus y squared equals 4. So y squared is, is so 12 thirds minus 4 thirds gives me 8 thirds. So y is plus or minus 2 root 2 over root 3. And that gives me those four points on the circle that we found. And I can do x times y, and it's going to be either plus or minus. Well, uh, 4, well, 2 times 2 times 2 times another 2. Um, so that's the 16, right? 16 over 3 root 3, same as before. We get the same answer. All right. So that's pretty cool. But, you know, you're not, um, you're not always going to be so lucky as to have a constraint be something that's easy to solve and plug in, right? Of course, in Calc 1, things are designed so that you can fairly easily solve and plug in. Um, so another option is you can use what's called the method of Lagrange multipliers. Okay. Now, the method of Lagrange multipliers, it's, it's fairly straightforward. Um, what happens is you, you have this constraint, and you want to look for kind of the, the biggest and the smallest values that you're going to get for your function, right? You're looking for these max and min values. 
And, and so one way to think about what's going on with Lagrange multipliers is that you've got your constraint curve, right? So we've got, let's draw this again. So we've got, we've got our axes. We've got our circle. And we could think of, well, you know, different value, each value that we get for this function, if I set f equal to a constant, it gives me a, a level curve, right? Um, now, those level curves, what are they going to look like? Uh, y squared is some constant over x, right? Or x is constant over y squared. Um, I guess I kind, of, I kind of know what those look like. Um, they're they're going to look something like, right, like this, right? So that would be like a level curve if, if c is, is bigger than 0. Um, and a level curve of C, that should get another color. Right. Um, okay. And a level curve of C is less than zero. Might look something like that. Okay. And so you get, of course, a family of these level curves. And as, as C increases or decreases, you get, you get a different curve in the family. And you're looking for sort of the, the most positive or most negative values of C, right? You need to satisfy the constraint. So if C gets very big, like a much bigger value of C might give you a curve out here, right? And this one, you know, you're not going to get a solution for a curve like that because, you know, this is a level curve that doesn't intersect your constraint curve. You can't, you know, so there's no points here that satisfy the constraint, so that's not going to work. Um, so what is going to be the biggest possible value of, of C that's going to do the job? Well, it's going to be the value of C that gives you the level curve that just barely touches, right? It's going to give you this one where your level curve is tangent to the constraint curve, right? And the minimum is going to be the one over here that just barely touches, okay? Now, one of the things we can say about, to, and remember the constraint is itself a level curve. Now there's two things to keep in mind, right? So, and let's actually put it over here, all right? One is that Lagrange multipliers are going to work in these situations where our constraints are level curves, right? Um, the other thing to remember is that gradient vectors, well, they're always perpendicular to level curves, okay? And so if I have two curves which are tangent to each other, right, that means their tangent lines are the same at that point, right? Those two tangent lines are going to have the same normal vector, or at the very least, parallel normal vectors, right? So the gradient of f and the gradient of g, they're going to be parallel. How do we... Um, how do we express the fact that two vectors are, are parallel, right? And so what, if you put these together, what it kind of tells you is that at a, a max or a min, at one of these constrained max or min values, um, the gradient of f is parallel to, and let's just say that this level curve is something like g of x, y equals a constant, right? Um, so the level curve that gives you the max or the min for, the, for your function at that point where you have the max or a min, the gradient has to be parallel to the gradient of g. So there's some scalar multiple which we call lambda. I'm not sure why, but we call it lambda, lambda times g, okay? This is the Lagrange multiplier equation, all right? The gradient of f should be a scalar multiple of the gradient of g, okay? There, there are other arguments you could make for, for why this... Uh, why this should be true, why the gradients should be, should be exactly tangent, right? Other than this kind of, well, they just barely touch. Um, the other way to think about it is 
if you were to parameterize that constraint, right? So the, this function, remember the way we did this in the last video is we plugged in our constraint, we, we parameterized as, as using t as our parameter, that gave us a function of t, we wanted that derivative to be zero, all right? Well, remember that if you plug a parametric curve into a function like this, you get a function of t, the derivative is the gradient of f dotted with the tangent vector for your curve, right? You want that to be zero. Well, you want that dot product to be zero, so once again, that would mean that the gradient of f should be perpendicular to the tangent to your curve, right? Which means, again, that it's parallel to the gradient. Uh, so there's a few ways of realizing this. Um, so how do you put together this, this Lagrange multiplier method to solve our problem yet one more way? Well, our constraint in this case would be g of xy equals x squared plus y squared. That's our constraint function. And we're setting it equal to constant four, right? There's our constraint curve. Um, so the gradient of g is just 2x, 2y. This Lagrange method says that the gradient of f, so y squared, 2xy, should be a scalar multiple of the gradient of g, so 2x, 2y, okay? Uh, if you compare the y components, you have 2xy equals 2 lambda y. Well, there's two ways to solve that equation. We could have y equals 0, and we know what happens when y equals 0. That's our critical point, remember, right? Then the gradient of f is, in fact, identically 0. Uh, or if y is not equal to 0, I can divide both sides by y. I can divide both sides by 2. And I get x equals lambda. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this and I'm going to sub it in. And what am I going to sub it into? I'm going to sub it into the equation that I get by looking at the x components, which is that, so y squared should be 2 times lambda times x. And if lambda has to be equal to x, then this is 2x squared, right? So y squared equals 2x squared. What do I do with that? Uh, I guess I, you know, y squared over x squared would have to be plus or minus root 2. There's that tan t equals plus or minus root 2 equation again, by the way. Remember that y over x on a circle is just tangent. Um, or what I could do is uh, I could sub in again. And now what I do is I, I go back and I use my constraint. So I take y squared equals 2x squared. I plug that into my constraint x squared plus 2x squared equals 4. So 3x squared equals 4. And from here, it's the same algebra as before, right? Um, x squared is, is 4 over 3. I can solve for x. Once I have x, I can solve for y. Once again, I get my critical points, right? Um, so several ways that you can solve this particular optimization problem. Um, we're going to do some more examples now with Lagrange multipliers because this is something which does apply much more generally. Uh, you can use Lagrange multipliers for functions of any number of variables. You can even look at situations where you have multiple constraints once you get to um, three or more variables. Um, so we'll do a couple more Lagrange multiplier examples um, and then we'll be ready to move on to integration. <laughs>